The title is Banned for Security Purposes, Part 2. Written by Neon One Blog. The room was almost empty. A couple of office chairs and a table where the laptop sat were the only furniture. Two officers sat quietly, waiting for their boss's next move. The captain crossed his hand and frowned at the laptop in front of him. Small neon lights fought away the darkness, revealing the white paint that covered the walls. Where the hell is that old idiot? Blew up the captain at the officers. Uh, he'll be here soon, answered a tall and well-built officer looking at his hand watch. We need him now. There's only five minutes till midnight. The door creaked open, letting an old man in a suit in holding his glasses on his nose with one hand and a thick notebook with the other. He hurried to the chair that was beyond the view of the laptop's web camera. What took you so long? demanded the captain restlessly. Well, you should be grateful I came. Captain, answered the man sharply. It's freezing outside. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? The old man rolled his eyes as a response and prepared his pen and notebook. Exactly at 100 hours. The laptop received the call. The captain reached out and pressed the button to answer. Hello? Hello? Captain? Said the voice behind the black screen. You still don't want to tell me your name? There should be no concern regarding my name whatsoever. Well, I need something to address you with. Come up with a name. The captain sighed and looked away for a moment before he focused his look right at the camera and said, There was something I wanted to ask you about. Go on. Did you tell us the whole truth about the Chain Man's case? <laughs> Chain Man, you're making me feel like we were living in a comic book. Anyways, yeah, that was the whole truth, said the voice. Well, I have a different opinion on that. The captain straightened himself up. Clearly proud of what he wanted to say. Well, I'm pretty positive that you lied. He stopped for a second, enjoying his little triumph by showing his wits to the voice and everyone else in the room. Then, continued. You see, I was thinking the other day about you, and I realized that you were lying, that you didn't want to kill the chain man. Well, actually, I believe that was your plan from the beginning. You couldn't allow the life of a person who saw your face. You like your position now. It's about the thing you have about being incognito. It just makes you feel smarter and superior to everyone around you. Huh, you're impressing me, Captain. Remarked the voice sarcastically. Didn't think you used your brain at all. Why can't you just let us see ya? Asked the Captain without any reaction to what the voice retorted. Making me feel like you're a shy teenager. Oh, maybe I am. Chuckled the voice. Well, anyway, the boy who came home after being kidnapped for over five months. Yeah, what about him? Well, I'm calling about his case. Well, we closed that case. And there is no case. The kid was traumatized. We didn't remember where he was or who kidnapped him at all. He couldn't recall the predator. Oh, well, I, I believe there should be more to that story. Oh, well, why? Call it the sixth sense. An intuition. Well, fine. What is it that interests you? I read the police files on this case. Yeah, after a read like that, it's no wonder why you guys closed the majority of the cases. So, now I need to talk to the family and the kid. Well, what do you want from them? I want to hear the story from them. That would help me. Help you with what? Finding the kidnapper? Oh, maybe. Or at least with something else. Which is? It's just, oh, uh, it's just a hypothesis. I, I don't share my ideas unless I'm sure I'm right. The captain looked away from the screen, sat still and nodded. Uh, okay, I'll let you meet them. That would be one of the smartest things you do in your entire career, Captain. The captain let this remark pass as well, and was going to leave until the voice stopped him. Hey, Captain. Yeah. Say hi to the psychologist. What the? I mean... The voice paused for a second. Wait, did you really think I wouldn't notice? What do you think I am? One of your idiots? 
Oh, what the hell are you talking about? Stuttered the captain. Oh, oh please. Sighed the voice. Don't make it more awkward than it already is now. It was obvious. You looked away in the corner where someone was writing something down every I would respond. You didn't even notice that I can see his shadow behind me on the wall because these stupid neon lights you have everywhere. It doesn't require a lot to understand that you brought someone to provide you with a psychological portrait of me. No one in the room knew what to say or how to fight the awkward silence that had lied on them. How impolite of you, Captain, said the voice in disappointment. Send my regards. The captain looked straight into the camera, his face crossed with anger. Holding in the last bit of control he had, he turned away again towards the door and left. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. came a final noise from the laptop, and the call ended. One at a time. The captain nodded, swearing to the mysterious voice that they had to deal with for no clear reason, and walked out of the room. A few seconds later, he came back with the man in his mid-forties and a beer belly. The man was wearing an old-fashioned shirt and tiny glasses above his red cheeks that barely covered his eyes. This is the father of the victim, said the captain to the black screen. What happened? Ordered the voice indifferently. The man was obviously surprised by the fact that he was going to be questioned by a voice coming from a laptop. He looked back at the captain trying to find out if it was serious. The captain nodded to the man in approval to answer the voice. Oh, okay, sighed the father. Well, it happened five months ago. My boy goes to the nearest school, which is six blocks away from our neighborhood, so we have a nanny to pick him up and get him home. Well, both my wife and I were working late, so we, we can't do it on our own. He would always wait for the nanny at exactly 3 p.m. near the school gate. That day, when the nanny arrived, he wasn't there. She thought he was somewhere else, so she kept waiting. When nobody was left in the school playground, she got worried, so she went to look for him. The teacher said he was there till the last moments, but no one saw him going any. What do you do? interrupted the voice. Sorry? What is your job? I am a CEO of a company. How much do you keep in the house? How is this related? Answer. Oh, I'm not sure, mumbled the father. Maybe 100,000. Oh, you have banks for these amounts. Oh, well, I'm against using banks for personal reasons. Uh-huh. Well, thank you. You may leave. The man stood up, shook the captain's hand, and left. The captain looked at the laptop with concern. You think whoever kidnapped the kid did it for his parents' wealth? No, no. I believe the kidnapper didn't know who the kid is. But I think the boy got released because of the wealth. What? exclaimed the captain. Well, that doesn't make much sense. They would have asked for ransom. There are other ways to get the money. Now, go get the boy. The captain disappeared behind the door for a moment and came back with the little boy. The boy walked in looking around, examining the room. He was wearing a new sweater and jeans. His cheeks and nose were red because of the cold weather outside. The captain placed him on a chair in front of the laptop and pointed on the black screen. There's someone in the laptop, explained the captain kindly. Answer the questions that'll be asked to you. Okay, agreed the boy. Do you remember anything about the time you were kidnapped? No. Nothing at all? No. Do you remember who kidnapped you? No. Do you remember how you got out? No. Try to remember anything. I remember a boy, mumbled the boy faintly. A boy? Well, try to remember more. Anything about the boy, how he looked, where, what happened, what was he wearing, anything. I can't. Oh, okay. You can go now. The boy ran out of the room to his mother, who was waiting for him outside. Oh, what the hell was that all about? 
yelled the captain in anger. You made me get these people from their homes only to ask the questions that we have already asked before. What is going on with you? Shut up. I got everything I needed. And what is that you needed? He will try to kill his family. What the? Now how do you get to that conclusion? How many children got kidnapped for the past 20 years in the city? How many of them got back? Now the kidnappings cannot be related to each other. The kids don't share any similarity as to suggest that it's the same kidnapper. And of course, you could think of the kidnapper as indifferent to the characteristics of kids, right? The most reasonable thing for you was to ransack the sewers, all after the boy disappeared. What were you thinking of? We ain't in no shitty movie. You don't look for kids in sewers. <sighs> what a bunch of idiots. We tried everything to find that boy, shouted the captain. Sorry, we were trying to do our job. And you couldn't do it well. You never do your job. You never do anything. So shut up and let me do your job for you. The call dropped and the captain kept looking at the screen that showed a message. Put guards at the house. The boy will try to kill the parents. Four days later. The captain was sitting alone in front of the laptop in the same white room illuminated by the small neon lights. His face showed a mixture of anger and shame. With indifference on his face, he put his hand in the inside pocket of his blue coat, getting out a cigarette. He raised it in front of his eyes, examining it from every possible angle, as if it was the most important thing at that moment. The captain brought the cigarette closer to his nostrils, reminding himself what cigarettes smell like. Hesitated, he placed it between his lips and inhaled. His skin crawled as his brain thought he was actually smoking. The captain left this habit long ago and never since then wanted to go back to it. But today, the desire to inhale smoke charged with nicotine that lurked deep inside him for all of these years came out. He put his hand in his pocket again and took the lighter that he carried along with the cigarette for so long only to praise the fight he won against smoking. The captain lit up the cigarette and took a good long drag of it. His body shook, responding to the nicotine he was deprived from. He took another drag, his head started spinning. Gray clouds of smoke were coming out of his mouth raising above him, vanishing in the air making it thicker. The cigarette ended quicker than he expected, making him regret smoking after all these years. In his defense, he tried to convince himself that only a cigarette could help him sustain calmness and a clear head. He kept looking at the screen of the laptop from time to time, expecting a call that seemed like will never arrive. After a long time spent in silence, the captain received a call on his cell phone. Hello, Captain said the voice anticipating by the captain. Why? Why did you do it? For God's sake, begged the captain. I did what I thought was right, answered the voice calmly. Why didn't you listen to me and put guards to the house? I can't act without having a reason, explained the captain bitterly. You never gave me a reason. Boy, try to understand. There is a system. I can't just act my way. <laughs> system? exclaimed the voice. <laughs> system. You and your officers let people die daily because of your rotten system. You make people like me do the right thing because you don't have the guts to do anything. We do our best, countered the captain. My men lose families trying to help people. You hide behind the system or any other reason only to justify yourselves before your conscience for letting innocent people die. We do what we can, boy. We always do what we can. That's not enough. I know, agreed the captain. Am I a murderer for you and your system now? You are, sighed the captain. Most wanted one, actually. <laughs> do you blame me? I don't know, hesitated the captain, resting his head on his hands. You did an awful thing. Well, sometimes the right thing well, is not actually a good thing. 
Boy, this city is not your playground. Uh, I understand that you're not like others, and I don't know how you do what you do. How do you use these Sherlock Holmes abilities? You can't just go rage in the streets and get away with that. Ha, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes? Oh, who was that? Wondered the voice. A detective, something of your kind, answered the captain indifferently. Anyways, concluded the voice. I just called to apologize. I, I know it might have been unpleasant for you to find what I did. Unpleasant? It's fucking horrible. You burned a woman in the center of the city. Yeah, I guess I did take it a bit too far. Oh, but I want people to see that justice is going to strike back. Lynching is the best way to aware the masses that no one can escape the punishment. Humanity was over this shit in medieval times. Now this is just extremists that should be punished like any other crime. People don't understand what justice is. Everyone just comes up with ethical and humane approaches, whereas we are in need for someone to keep people afraid. That's not right. It's what I believe in. Your ways never work. Well, that doesn't mean you get to simply publicly kill people. Stop me. I will. I really hope so. The captain wiped the sweat off his forehead and asked, Tell me everything that happened last night. Okay, as you know, you didn't put the guards to the house. So the only thing left for me to do was to go there myself. Why? Wondered the captain. Explain everything. Fine. I asked to talk to the boy to see if my theory was right. When I first heard of his story, it got my attention. It was weird that someone kidnapped a child that just released them with no reason for doing so. I made some research to know how often missing children are being reported in the city. I was surprised to find that an unsettling number of children have gone missing over the past 15 years. And of course, it's hard to believe that only one person was behind all these kidnappings. But if you think of it, it's even harder to believe that there were different people. It was a small city, at last. But who and why would they need all those children? Then I remember noticing a network of children working as delivery workers for items from the black market, mostly drugs. I connected the network and the kidnappings. And another question was raised. Why would kids work for their kidnapper? Why no one ever tried to run away? Well, the answer is simpler than you can expect. They were hypnotized. <laughs> as easy as that. That's how my theory started. Well, of course, it was just a theory. Then it was all plain for me. Well, apparently, the boy told the kidnapper that his family has lots of cash at home. He was released. His memory was blocked. He was hypnotized to kill the parents, get the money, and come back. I asked to see him to make sure. Then I asked you to keep an eye on him. <laughs> you never did. I decided to take action. I broke into the house. I spent around three days in the attic, going down at nights as I believed the boy would strike at night. It's the only way to get rid of two grown-ups for his age, really. I waited for him to attack. When he tried to, I made sure I stopped him. I was gone by the time his parents were awake. I find hypnosis to be a very interesting subject. I tried one of the techniques of rapid hypnosis on him to get the address of the kidnapper or where they kept the kids. In a short while, I was there. An old house owned by a 50-year-old widow. I sneaked into the basement to find most of the missing kids, and it took a while to get them back from their trance. What happened next is a bit blurry in my memory. When I came upstairs, I found her. We had a short talk. She tried to hypnotize me, which <laughs> it didn't. Why did she do it? For the money. It was her business. She found out about her hypnosis skills a long time ago, when she was a subject of domestic violence. She convinced her husband to divorce her and later on kill himself. Refusing to live under anyone's control, she decided to be the one in control herself. Using her brilliant abilities and hypnosis, she persuaded kids to come with her and became her slaves. Anyways, I knocked her out and brought her to the middle of the city 
secretly, placed her in front of the court and burned her. Now, of course, I took some security measures so no cameras or people saw me. Right now, when the first eyewitness arrived, no one was there except her, attached to one of the piles of the court, screaming. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't see it. I would have enjoyed it. When we arrived, we found some parts of her body were totally burned, exposing the bones. Her ribcage was visible, her scalp was melting, and showed a bit of a skull. There was nothing to enjoy. Whatever you say. Hum the voice. Come to the station. Make it easier for yourself. I'll try to help you in court. Huh. You'll find me. Yeah, I will. Okay, Captain. I'm waiting for you to do so. But for now, let's stop here. Wait, said the captain. I need to ask you something. Go on. The boy said you told him that everything will go back to normal and that you know what it's like to be kidnapped. Is that true? It's your job to find out. The phone call dropped. The captain straightened himself up trying to get up from the chair, but his numb limbs had other plans for him. He rests his back on the chair and closes his eyes, thinking. Voices were raised outside the captain's office, followed by a loud bang on the door. A young fit woman stormed into the room. Her long ponytailed black hair was covered with a thin layer of snow. Her face was hiding behind huge glasses and a pink scarf she had around her neck. She pulled her hands out of her short leather jacket, pushing away anyone trying to prevent her from reaching the captain. She got in, clicking her way in with her black heels and pointing at the captain. Captain, I need to talk to that mysterious son of a bitch you're talking to.